What is up, everybody? My name is Javius Johnson, and welcome to the Dow Lab. This is the podcast where dads, future dads, and wannabe dads come together and talk about family stories, life lessons through fatherhood, and of course, other dad things. Now, for today, we got a very special episode. A very, very special episode. We got our first guest on the podcast. Now you guys know, for the first guest, I had to go with somebody special, right? I had to go with somebody who means a lot to me. You guys know this person by the name of Jason Johnson, but this guy to me is my very own dad. Welcome to the podcast, dad. How's it going? Glad to be a part of it. Hey, I you you know we you know you know I had to get you on. I had to get you on. <laughs> Like this podcast is all about dads and you are the one that created me. So uh, you get the honors to be the first guest on the show. Well, I appreciate it. All right, so I got a question, Dad. You been keeping up with basketball at all? Just a little bit. Just a little bit? Yeah, Piquito, Piquito Mas. (laughs) You know know the NBA playoffs are coming up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those of you, those of you guys who, who are listening and watching, every time the NBA playoffs come up, that's like the time where me and my dad bond the most. I, growing up, I did not like basketball, and my dad is a huge basketball fan. Uh, so, the moment that I started to really enjoy basketball was during the playoffs. Like I remember. I remember just being in high school and you know that it'd be like the end of the school year and the playoffs will be on and I'll get to stay up longer. I get to, you know, <laughs> I, I get to, you know, get away with not doing homework for the night just to, just to watch playoffs with my dad. Oh my. So <clears throat> when the NBA playoffs come around, it's a special feeling for me. Cause that's like, that's like one of the, uh, one of the many things that you and I got to bond over is mm-hmm. basketball. Yeah. Basketball. Oh, so yeah. like what's what's one of your like favorite NBA playoff memories? Off the top of the head, what's one of your favorite ones? Man, my, one of my favorite ones really would be um you know, and he didn't make it as Kobe's last season. Mm. You know, but, you know, just I didn't realize how much impact that man had on me until he wasn't here anymore. Right. You know, and uh, rest right. in peace. But, man, he he was uh, he was he was just the, the person that kept basketball alive to me after Jordan. OK, OK. You Did know, I you miss about it. Yeah, now his competitiveness, his drive, his his uh his uh ability to grow, his you know his his eagerness to grow and what he did to make himself better, um, mm-hmm. game after game, you know, it's, it's no coincidence when you see someone really good in the NBA that they just accidentally became that way, right? Now, now I'm gonna say this, and this 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 will. You know, rub a lot of people the wrong way. But oh, when, LeBron, that? when LeBron came into the league, I really didn't have a lot of respect for him. He's just not an exciting player to watch. He's not, you know. And, you know, they created a lot of hype that he wasn't able to live up to. But over the years, this is what I want to say to to get all the people, you know what I mean? All, you know what I mean? Calm them down a little bit is one thing that I respect about LeBron. Now, this is kind of segueing what you asked me, what what the the best playoff I like. And I'm saying this because it it still makes sense. LeBron, over the period of time, took all the criticism that everybody gave him and he made his game better, right? And so I can respect it about him because right now, LeBron then polished his game season after season after season. 
And I get to watch, I got to watch that, not only with LeBron, but I watched it with Kobe as well. So Kobe was that man that everyone looked up to, even LeBron and all these other players. That's the, that's the player in the league that people looked up to because it's hunger and his drive to become better and make himself better night after night after night. And yeah. not being afraid to be that leader. Yeah. to take everything up on his back. It's hard to do as a young man, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, you know, so anyway, that being, you know, Kobe's last season was one of the most impactful playoff years. Yeah, I mean, I, I can I can piggyback off that. Um, Kobe is the reason why I started watching basketball. Um, just the way he approached the game, uh, his mindset, you know, how he can cut corners. That, I really related to that, and I really wanted to be like him in a way. I mean, a lot of people want to be like Kobe in a way. But that's why it's so impactful for me when he uh, died was because through him, me and you got to bond over basketball, a sport that I didn't used to like. Hmm. So, um, yeah, like that, I agree with that. That that season was definitely a memorable one for me as well. Hmm. But speaking of, speaking of, you know, bonding over basketball, um, I want to ask you a question. Right. How important as a father is it to have moments like bonding over basketball, like the NBA playoffs? How is important is it to have moments like that with your kids? I think that is very important. I think it's very important. And, you know, you know me, son, you know how I answer questions, but I think it's very important for any relationship, period. If you don't create moments to bond, it's like you're just existing in space with nothing to reflect back on, no memories. Bonds create memory, right? So with my children, you being one of them, um, one thing that, that, that I do not do is hold myself back, like people may think, but I don't care about looking weird or acting Silly. I don't I hate the word silly, but you know uh, what most people think silly is. I don't. I don't mind seeming, you know, getting outside the box and being something, you know, adventurous or whatnot, you know, because I'm, I'm creating memories. I'm creating moments. I'm creating bonds, right? And so I don't care how what other people think about me when I'm interacting with those that are close to me, mm -hmm. right? So I look goofy or weird or, you know what I mean, uncomfortable. You know, it doesn't matter because I'm trying to uh, create a moment for the people that I care most about. And so sometimes that takes getting getting outside of yourself and um, going, being a little extra, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. So I yeah, think it's. I, go ahead. I think I think um, especially when having kids, you kind of. You kind of have to be like that, right? You gotta, you gotta have to, you know, not care what people think, you know. I mean, because your kids are gonna ask you to do something that, you know, will make them laugh or yeah. uh, will make them happy. And most of the time, when kids ask you to do something, you know, it's gonna be goofy. And I think that's a a, a really cool trait to have as a father is to, you know, be able to put how you look aside you know, how you look in front of people aside to create those memories. Hmm. And speaking of memories, I just, this, this thought just came to my head. <laughs> Listeners and, view, and viewers, I remember uh, we went to Disney World, right? Um, I think it was when I was in sixth grade or seventh grade. Oh no, it was seventh grade going into eighth grade. <laughs> We're going to Disney, we went to Disney World. And, you know, my other siblings, they know this. When my dad gets on a ride, he acts a fool and he <laughs> it's the most funniest thing in the world like we'll get on a ride and it doesn't even start yet it'll just start moving and my dad just starts screaming ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and you know as a kid or just being that young i used to think it was the funniest thing in the world like my dad is just screaming you know <laughs> everyone's laughing and that's just one of the coolest things to see as as a kid see your parent just you know I don't care what other people, I don't care that they're looking at me. I'm going to make you laugh. And that was like, 
like when I look back at Disney World, that was one of my favorite memories when we were on, I think it was Space Mountain. Yeah. And you were just screaming through the whole ride and me and Jedi were cracking up. That was hilarious. That was hilarious. See, 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 so that created a moment, right? Yep. And so just think about if I just was this stiff person, you know, I got to make sure everything is done right. You got to, you know what I mean? Make sure you're walking in the right line. Don't do nothing and all that. I mean, it, it, you wouldn't remember nothing right. with me being there. But I can I can remember even moments, you know, some of those moments even stand out to me. So not only do they create memorable moments for you, they create mo memorable moments for me. So I remember actually one time we, we went to the movie theater, right? And I took you and a friend and we just had a popcorn fight in the movie theater. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, you see, so it created a moment for me. So, you know, yeah, I mean, it's popcorn all over the movie theater. You supposed to be eating it and, and then the parents supposed to be acting civilized or whatever. But listen, at this particular moment, I'm just creating a, a memory with my son and his friend. You know, sometimes it's OK to just have fun a little bit within reason. And, and it also gives you the liberty to be a little bit of, of to free knowing that, oh, wow, my dad did this. Now I can, you know, goof around a little bit, but within reason and making sure that I'm also being respectful of people's property and people's space. You just have to know when to do it and when not to do it. And that was a moment when I knew as an adult, this is a right time to have fun. You know, let's create this move, this, this memory outside of the move. Now, I really, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't remember what we went to watch. But I do remember I that moment. See, you remember. You remember. Yeah, we went to go watch uh, Over the Hedge. Over the Hedge. Yep. Yeah, we went and we went over the hedge, didn't we? If those employees happen to be watching this video or listening to this podcast, we are very sorry. We are, uh, that was in our younger days. Right. That's our younger days. So, uh, yeah. You know, you? they know they know that too. They 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 know. They clean up. They they good. I don't know. If I was an employee and I walk in the theater and there's popcorn everywhere, yeah. I don't care about the memories. I'm like, yeah. who did this first of yeah. all? But you know, Somebody I talked to a, yeah, I, get, I, I, I talked to an owner and they they kinda not an owner but a, a manager, they kinda know that. You know, they know that. You know, but they, they, that. you remember I used to work in a movie theater. Oh yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. I, I used to work in a movie theater, so I, I know forgot about this. Yeah. I know how it feels to walk in a theater and, and it's there's popcorn just everywhere. popcorn everywhere, <laughs> candy wrappers, slushy. Like, it's serious. It's serious. And it's like that after every movie. After every movie, because it's, it's a dad in there doing something. Up. <laughs> Some knucklehead dad in there starting a popcorn fight. That's what it is. Oh, man. No, but I, and you know, as me being a dad now, I, I cannot wait to to um, have moments like that with my kids. I can't wait to create memories like that with my kids. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, not, not only did you, you know, do something in that moment, you also created something for the future. So I think that's pretty cool. Look, for all the dads and the kids that go to the popcorn, going to the movies, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> you started a trend. That somebody who has never done that before is going to listen to this podcast and be like, that's a great idea. I'm going to start that with my kid. <laughs> we just created a horrible trend. But, hey. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, we're going we gonna to bring money to the popcorn people. <laughs> hey, hey, for real. Because people are going to go to the movies to try that out. So, yeah, there you go. Definitely. All right. So I want I want to get a little, a little serious uh, with this next question I have for you. And this is something that I've been, you know, wondering. Okay. And I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this question and maybe even the answer that you give. But um, how hard was it being a dad when you first became a dad, especially not having a dad in your life? You know, somebody asked me that recently. Really? It, it wasn't. It wasn't like that question, but it was similar. And, you know, it was kind of normal to me, really? right? Yeah, because my situation 
could probably relate to some other people's situations, but then some other people is probably foreign to them. So with me, I'm the oldest of 11. So, yeah. So, you know, with me, that just created a lot of um, responsibility to the young, to the people under me. So I, you know, I was used to holding babies. I was used to babysitting. I was used to changing diapers. I was used to making milk. I was used to watching them. I was used to, you know, making sure that, you know, that, that certain things happen, protected them and certain things. And it was a lot of lack of responsibility that happened to me because I was a young man that I, you know, held, that I was hard on myself for, but I was hard on myself for not being capable, but yet I was still incapable at that age. But to me, I just felt like I should be re more responsible as being left that responsibility to take care of my brothers and sisters. You know, you know, so um, as I had my own, I had went through a lot of transitions of making mistakes and trials and errors and also the uncomfortable stage of holding the baby legs up, putting a diaper up under them, feeling like you're going to break them, you know, holding them the right way. All of that stuff, you know, tossing them up in the air. I just it, it's like being around something so long just makes you a little bit more comfortable and also gives you the respect for this life that's there so i was actually it was a foreign guy that was that, that said this to me and this is what i said to him i said you know um i to me it was it was a little easier um because of that but i know it's not to a lot of other people because it's a lot of first timers out there that never had the chance to experience it like i experienced it and this is what i said to him and i said that's why grandparents are important because the grandparents kind of help with that transition of new parenthood and i said and i, and I said you know that's that's the type that's the, the the culture that we come from and the guy looked at me he said where you from I said, I'm from the United States. He said, you, you're American? I was like, yeah. He said, but that's how we do it. You know, you know, for, for the grandparents that come in, they kind of help out. And he said, he said, oh, it helps out so much. We need that because you just don't know all the adjustments you're tired and just everything that you go through as a new parent. Um, the grandparents kind of help with that transition. But with me, I felt grandfathered in, so to speak, to parenthood. So it's a it's not a normal answer. I hope it wasn't too long. It's not a normal answer for it. For, but I know some some parents have that. Uh, and it, it was also the same way with your mom, you know. So we both were a little experienced because we were the older of a lot of other siblings and the life that we lived, the responsibility that we had to take on prepared us to have the mindset to take this parenting thing a little serious. Mm -hmm. So the, the experience with um, all your siblings and just you being the oldest really prepped you. You know, not only that. Bit from yeah, not only that, but it this, this is weird because um, all my neighbors asked me to babysit. <laughs> Wait, when you were younger? Yeah. Now, that's not <laughs> normal for a guy to do that. It's not right. like I wouldn't ask a teenager guy to babysit for me. It's just no, it's just trend. You know, it's just it, the, 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 the social standard is to ask a young girl, a teenage girl to babysit mm -hmm. for you. It just just seemed right about that. Yeah. But I was always asked to babysit. I mean, for all the neighbors, I was always asked to babysit and I loved it because I got paid, I got a chance to play video games. You know what I mean? I got, you know what I mean? I got to <laughs> watch TV, you know, talk on the phone while the kids is upstairs. It was why they went out to the club or whatever, you know, but still that was another side of the experience that I got because I mean, even though they wasn't my kids, I knew I had to be a little responsible right. for somebody else's kids. So, when you give him responsibility, I think you're also going to take it a little serious, especially if you're getting paid. <laughs> yeah. God takes it seriously if you're getting paid. 
I have I have a lot of I have a lot of friends um, who either didn't have a dad in their life or they're just not close with their dads. And growing up, I used to I used to wonder like, what would my life be like without you know my dad just always being there? <clears throat> and I say that to ask you a question: Do you ever do you ever look back on how different your life would be if you did have your dad in your life is that something that ever crosses your mind you know i used to um and i think that this is this is only from my own perspective and it can only be from my own respect perspective even from the people that i've talked with i've talked to a lot of people that didn't have a dad and um you know some of them called me dad and mentor you know looked at me as a mentor um, and, it, and it's hard not having a dad, right? It, it's really hard. Uh, dads kind of help you with identity. Dads kind of help you to uh, find purpose in life. It, it, even if they don't share what that purpose is, it just creates a segue for you to feel more authoritative in finding your purpose. Like a, a lot of people walk through life trying to figure out who they are and what they're here for. And a lot of that is absence of dads, which is absence of self-identity, right? Because I have nothing to reflect to. I don't know who to, yeah, so I don't know who to identify with. So I'm trying to put on images a lot of time that's, that has nothing to do with who I really am. I just want to fit in. I want to fit into something. So I cleave to something and, and, and a lot of things become like a father figure to me. It could be music, TV, gangs, anything. However, the, the short answer to that is I used to, but now I don't because, and, and I have to do this, God became my father. He really did. And everything that I needed to become a man, I found in him. So my identity, my self-esteem, my image, um, the way I'm supposed to conduct myself, how I suppose my character, everything. I mean, he really taught me how to be a man. And I think I think one of the things that any child wants to do is he wants to be like his dad. Well, I want I want to be like my dad. He became my, he came, became a father figure to me. And not only did I want to become my, like my dad by him being that example to me, I was able to be a better dad. So all of my dad tactics, all of the all the questions that I had, he gave me the answers to kind of help to raise my son the way that he raised his son. Mm. So Man, that's really good. I want to I want to point out something that uh, you said. You said um, you you had nothing to self reflect on. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that's huge. I never looked at it that way. You know, you had you had nothing to compare up to. And you and I were having a conversation about how you know the standard. You know, you 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 set the standard for me, and it, it's you know it's easier for me to you know go about life because I see a standard. I see a I see a bar, and. You know, that's one one of the reasons why I thought it was really important to start this podcast because, you know, just to show the importance of dads, you know, show the importance of dads in in uh, their kids' lives, uh, highlight those dads who are in their kids' lives, um, because it's, it's so important. It's so important to all ages. Right. I, I feel like no matter how old you get the impact that your father had on you is still going to impact you, you know, even when you're older. Mm. Um, And I'll say this as well. You, you have done a a great job at um, not only being a great father, but also uh, pointing uh, me to the source of what like the grand standard of a great father is. (laughs) And that, that's something that has helped me so, uh, helped me so much in my life, especially when, you know, I was living in Rockford and you were living, you know, here in Texas, I really had to rely on him kind of like how you were, um, kind of how, like, like, like you were saying, you had to rely on him and I had to do that as well. So, I mean, without you, you know, setting that standard and, 
without you showing me that i i feel like i would be screwed you know because <laughs> just don't have anything to point to and then uh. you kind of said that too so what are what are some and and for this you can you can speak to uh, future dads you can speak to you know just young men in general what are some sacrifices that you should expect entering into fatherhood the sacrifices that I can, you know, the sacrifices, um, they pile up. They really pile up. But, you know, some of the sacrifices is is the sacrifice of time, the sacrifice of money, um, the sacrifice of agenda, the sacrifice of direction. And if we could speak to that, you know, just the sacrifice of time. Um, you know, you, you may want to do things. I, I you know, and, and I see this with a lot of, a lot of, uh, younger parents that, you know, me and my wife grew up with, you know, just people that we observed, you know, some of them just don't want to be parents mm. because they don't want to sacrifice the time to spend with their child. Right. Because they still want to. Um, which is nothing wrong with this part of it. They want to make something of their life, but at the sacrifice of the time spent, right? That becomes more important than the time spent. Where in our approach to parenthood is that family is the most important. It's the key ingredient to your existence, right? Is, Mm -hmm. Is, you know, I go out and I do so that I can provide, right? It's not like my family is a byproduct of provision. The provision is a byproduct of the family, right? Because I'm I'm doing everything that I do for my family. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of people um, just kind of forget to teach the importance of family. Yeah. And they teach the importance of everything else. It's not saying that everything is less important, but um, if you don't teach the importance of family, I can go out and I can I can make it rich. I can you know, get a good job and become successful. And if I didn't teach, if I'm if I'm not taught the importance of how to raise a family then I got all this stuff, but I don't know how to raise my family. I don't know how to treat my wife. I don't know how to treat my my children. Right. Right. But if I if I go out and I can teach the importance of the relationship of father, son, husband and wife. Right. Mm -hmm. then all this other stuff is going to be used the right way. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I sacrificed basketball games. I sacrificed um, I sacrificed working out. I sacrificed my own agenda. I sacrificed money. Right. But Mm -hmm. but yet yet in in, in the same token, I don't look at them as sacrifices. Mm -hmm. I look at them as all investments. Right. Because really it's all seed sown for the betterment of this child's future, right? So I would always know whether I discipline or not, whether I'm having fun or not, everything I do is really to prepare this child for the future. I'm disciplining for the future. I'm loving for the future. All is for the correction and, and for the and it's for the, uh, the betterment of the whole person. Like, this yeah. person is going to grow up and be independent. And I don't, I only could do my best. So that means everything I do has to be intentional. Like, right. I mean, like, uh, sometimes I sacrifice sleep. Mm-hmm. Why do I sacrifice sleep? It's because I got to teach a lesson. Mm-hmm. Say, Dang, you, you always got to teach a lesson. Yes, I do. <laughs> you know, because I'm here at this moment in time for your best interest. And that's yeah. bottom line. And so, yes, I'm sleepy, but we're going to be up all night if I have to, mm-hmm. to make sure that you can understand the importance of what's going on here. Mm-hmm. Like, um, one person said this, well, I said this really, but I, heard, <laughs> I don't know if I heard it from somebody else. Uh, but if you, if you spoil the child, you raise the grandchild. Mm. But if you raise the child, 
then you can spoil the grandchild. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's accurate. Yeah. So, that's accurate. So the sacrifice that I that I that I would that I would say that any parent should make is a sacrifice of um pride. Right. Mm. Put that to the side. You know what I mean? Sacrifice your own agenda. Put that to the side. Um, sacrifice relationships that that are not healthy. Um, mm-hmm. You know, those things that that don't, you know, put you sac- sacrifice, sac- sacrifice sometimes the things that you want to watch mm-hmm. and watch what your your, chi- your children watch, because I can guarantee some of the stuff um, sacrifice what you listen to. Mm-hmm. Right? Sacrifice that because, you know, what you listening to may be damaging to your child's ear may not be the right substance that they need to make them whole. So if it's if it's not really wholesome, then you sacrifice that. Maybe mm-hmm. you know, listen to some stuff that that will build future in them, that'll make them whole and even make you better as well. So sacrifice yeah. the childish things. Let's let's grow up and be men, right? Mm-hmm. I I like how you said you don't really look at them as sacrifices or like investments. Yeah, I think that's that's huge. And, you know, as you were saying that, the, the picture of an apple seed came into my head. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I feel like this is an, an analogy that you told me when I was like super young, but I don't know. But as you were saying that, I just pictured an apple seed, right? Planted in the ground. Um, and that represents, you know, parents having kids, right? You, you planting a seed into the world. And, you know, in order for that seed to grow, you got to water it, obviously. Everybody knows how, you know, plants work. You know, you got to, they got to get nutrients. They got to get the sun. They got to get water. And, you know, those nights where you're staying up to feed your child, you're watering the seed. That's uh, the time you spend, you know, holding your child just because they want you to hold them. You're watering that seed. And eventually that seed is going to grow into what? An apple tree right and it's not only going to grow into a big strong apple tree it's going to grow into a a a tree a plant uh, a source that's going to uh produce right apple trees produce apples and i think that's one of the coolest things as being a parent is not only do we get to see the seed grow but we also um get to we also get to see um we get to see what it produces, right? We get to see it flourish. We get to see it, you know, be what it's supposed to be. And I feel like you, I, in your in your time as being a dad, in your uh, in the season you're in, a, at, at, as being a dad, you get to you're starting to see that. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But that's one thing I'm one thing that I'm looking forward to um as a dad is to you know see my seeds grow up to be apple trees analogy don't take it literal but um yeah that's that's one thing that i'm super excited about and it's also from you saying that i kind of i'm kind of checking myself because you know being a young parent you know when you know my daughter she's just fussing for no reason and I'm trying to do something, I'm trying to build something, I'm trying to edit, whatever it is. And she's fussing, she just wants me to hold her. You know, that first reaction can sometimes just be an annoyance. Like, oh, why, why, why do I gotta hold you right now? And, you know, but when you, when you not turn it around and look at it as an investment, it definitely checks you. Like, I'm not just doing this for no reason, right? I'm not just, you know, feeding my child for no reason obviously you, you feed your kids you know so they stay alive but you know i'm not just um doing tummy time for no reason right. i'm not just reading books to my child for no reason it's an investment and it's gonna grow to be something really big in the future and i yeah. think that's really cool that you you said that that keyword investment yeah you know? yeah I, I i do remember using that that analogy with the apple seed mm-hmm. um so when it came to me, uh, I was woke up in the middle of the night. This idea, I believe God spoke this to me. And, um, you know, it was a question that was asked. Do I eat apples? You know, so I'm going to ask you that question just 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 to get the, 
the, the question, you know, get it how it came to me. Javis, do you eat apples? Of course, I'd be smacking apples. Yeah. So, so when you eat it, how much of it do you eat? Uh, everything except the core, except the seeds. And then when you're done, what do you do with it? Throw it in the garbage. Why? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm, it's not, it, it's not of my use anymore. I don't need it anymore. Right. And so that's exactly, I'm literally, that's exactly what I said to the questions that was asked to me about that. And then this is what was said to me after that. Whenever you have no need for the seed, you would disregard it and throw it away. And he mm. said, that's what fathers are doing to their seeds. Whoa. Wow. That's deep. Right. And so, you know, the point is, 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 is to understand what the purpose of a father is, mm -hmm. is to also know the purpose of the seed. Because, I mean, like I said, if I, I don't, I don't have my father in my life, right? Whatever reason that is, I don't know. I mean, it's that's here or there, right? But it is evident that that seed wasn't important enough for him to stay around. So it was mm -hmm. disregarded. And that happens a lot uh, in a lot of parents' life. And a lot of times it's because they're young, mm -hmm. they're mature. Right. And, and they having right sex mm -hmm. because peer pressure and lo and hold a seed comes out. And now the first thing is it's not mine or whatever. Whatever the reason is, is they're afraid of the responsibility of this seed. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's a lot of people that's like that. Um, and then they grew up resenting the father because the seed was left there to grow without any direction, without any nourishment, without any protection. So the seed had to find out what kind of seed it was, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Am I an orange tree? Am I an apple tree? Am I a pear right. tree? I don't know, right? I mean, what is my identity? I don't even right. know because I don't even know what tree I came from. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so that, that's, that, that is kind of an analogy that I, I use that God kind of showed me. Um, you know that you you know you part of the father's job is is to help with the purpose and uh and if you don't look at it that way then like what you were saying you could be doing other things busy in your life and the, and the child just needs some attention needs to be right. held needs to be cratered or whatever you mm -hmm. know and we're too busy for it but sometimes right. we need to <laughs> sa sacrifice right to make mm -hmm. that investment mm -hmm. so that that child and in the early age so that child can get what they need but in the early ages i think that those are checkpoints that help us prepare for other moments in the child's life because there's other moments that we're gonna have to be there yeah for the child if we already established that pattern and that habit that routine when they're young just sitting down and holding them putting everything aside and just talking to them then that becomes the natural um default setting when you get older and um you know they not demanding your time but you do know that they right. need it on the inside so you set some time aside because you still can recognize that there's something wrong mm. that's good that's good i i think i i really think you know some of the things that you're saying i actually know some of the things you're saying is going to help out a lot of dads not only dads but parents in general we're coming to a close dad you you're you you did a great job you did a great job you got so much wisdom in you and you you gotta you gotta put it out more you gotta put it out more like i'm just i was just sitting here like you my dad and you know i i <laughs> we, we talk you know but just just hearing you say this time i'm just like sitting here watching my own podcast like it's, it's some it's a lot of wisdom a lot of wisdom a lot of wisdom <clears throat> all right so we are coming to a close sadly you know time is money and my dad is about his money that's <laughs> that's something that my dad used to always tell me <laughs> but yeah we're coming to a close but i'm gonna leave you guys with hopefully something that will inspire you something that you can carry on through your day 
And that is stop looking for motivation. What you need is discipline. What you need is discipline. This, this is something that, you know, maybe some people don't need to hear this, but I know there is some people who definitely need to hear this is you need discipline. And not only you need discipline, also I need discipline. Discipline is just such a important uh, trait for you to have, especially as a dad, right? We were talking, to, talking about Kobe earlier. Kobe was super disciplined, right? Kobe did things when he didn't feel like doing them. He, he did things when he, he wasn't motivated. But look where he got through that discipline, right? I mean, if you look at any, any, uh, anybody who's very successful in their field, one thing that they all have is discipline. One thing they all have is discipline. And I'm not only saying this to you guys, I'm also saying it to myself. I got to choose every day that I wake up to be disciplined, every day to commit to what I'm trying to be disciplined to. That's another thing. You got to commit to it, right? If you just say, uh, tomorrow morning, I'll probably wake up at five. Maybe I wake up at six. Maybe I wake up seven. Well, we'll see. That's not discipline, right? That's not you committing. And I'm calling myself out because I literally said that this morning. I literally said that I was going to wake up at five in the morning and my daughter was crying at night. And I was just like, eh, maybe I wake up at five in the morning. Gone. I didn't even commit to what I said I was going to do. And that's really going to be a challenge that I want to, that I'm going to start and you guys can start alongside of me. And that's to be more disciplined. That's to commit to the things that we said we're going to do. And, uh, and let's just see how far we get. You want to add anything to that, dad? Listen, you, you hit it right on the nose. I, I'm listening to you and I, and I, and I agree with it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that's right on point. I think motivation is just the engine. Yeah. You know, just to get you started. But the discipline is is, you know, driving in the direction that you need to go. Mm -hmm. I think if I ask anything add anything is you know, discipline is the beginning of consistency. Cause um Ooh. it's the consistent effort, daily discipline, compounded, right? Compounded consistency always compound. And mm -hmm. is that that gets you result. So I would say motivation to discipline, discipline to consistency, consistency compounds because it's got to be done daily. And I think that's how we see results. And so, yeah, I think you hit it right on the nose, son. I like it. Man, you like took it. you took what I said and made it sound way better. No, no I was no, basically no. trying to say that, but you know. Oh. <laughs> That's basically what I was trying to say. No, it sounded really good. Trust me. It sounded <laughs> good. I was listening to it. It was good. <laughs> All right. Well, my name is Javius Johnson. Uh, this is Jason Johnson, a.k.a. my dad. We want to thank you guys so much for listening or watching this episode, episode two. Um, this, this podcast, this YouTube channel is going to be such a ride. It's going to be so fun. Um, it's going to be so much growth, not only for the channel, but for um, us dads, just viewers in general, not even dads. Um, we're going to experience so much growth through it. Through it. Um, I had so much fun during this podcast. Thank you, dad, for joining me. Um, you guys can listen on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, YouTube, if you're a viewer. Um, also, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, all those. So uh, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.